Well, hi friends and welcome to Did You Art, the YouTube channel for people who don't take themselves or their art too seriously. So I want to do a book flip slash review and show and tell if that's such a thing today. I am a huge fan of Jenna Rainey. She is an amazing watercolor artist. She does a lot of modern florals. She has an amazing YouTube channel, which I'll go ahead and link down below, where she demonstrates how to do all these different types of watercolor techniques and create the most beautiful floral designs. I love her channel. I love her personality. She seems really down to earth and she seems to really have um, a good understanding of what beginner watercolor artists are looking for as far as content, as far as tips, and as far as um, just development goes, I guess. So she has had two books. This is her second book. The first book, I actually posted a review and a flip through on already. I think it was earlier this year. This book came out, I wanna say earlier this summer. I think it was in June. And I don't know if you can tell, but it is already very well loved. <laughs> I really enjoy this book. So I thought that I would do a quick flip through, show you guys some samples of uh, work that I've done using this book. And that way you guys can decide if you want to add it to your art book collection. So let's get started. So the title of this book, as you can see, is Everyday Watercolor Flowers, A Modern Guide to Painting Blooms, Leaves, and Stems, Step by Step. And like I said, this is by Jenna Rainey. It is a very thick book. It's got a lot of pages to it. In fact, there are 180, so you're definitely getting your money's worth of good content. Now, one thing I love about Jenna is her wreaths. Her floral wreaths and they're just so loose they're so fluid and it really gives you a lot of inspiration as to not only what kind of flowers you can incorporate into this type of design but what kind of color palettes you can work with I mean she's got the blues in here the reds the pinks a little bit of orange like a peach it's just beautiful so just really quick to walk you through the contents she has divided each chapter up into shapes, which I think is so smart, makes painting flowers a lot less intimidating if you just boil it down to basics. So the first chapter is star shapes, the second chapter is circle shapes, she's got bell shapes, bowl shapes, trumpet shapes, and then just a combination. So this is like a little bit more advanced in my opinion. Um, and then within each chapter, you get to paint a different type of flower. How cool is that? So like any good book, it starts off with talking about the different types of supplies that you'll need, brushes, good old color theory, we've got the color wheel, talking about color mixing, um, a lot of the different color palettes, the ranges you can use. But she does a really good job. I mean, a lot of books have this in the beginning, but this is easy to read, it's easy to understand, and it's not boring, if that makes sense. Plus, there's just beautiful illustrations, so that makes it a little bit more enjoyable to learn about the technical side of um, painting watercolor. Then she gets into composition. And this is something that I found to be very, very helpful, not only from this book, but from her YouTube channel. I don't know about you, but I have always struggled with painting leaves. And you think, okay, leaves are like the easiest thing. It's like a little green or brown or whatever, red little shape, and that's it. But I have always struggled with painting leaves and getting the curves right. And this book does such a fantastic job of teaching you how to paint leaves, the natural flow of them, the different curves, like the S-shape curve, and things that you can do. And her YouTube channel um, is great for that as well. So there's a good section on techniques. Again, the emphasis is on watercoloring um, flowers. Then we get into a whole section, like I said, on the leaf shapes. And there's even a little practice I did here, as you can see. So I had fun learning how to lift my brush, how to apply pressure, when to back off a little bit all the different shapes of leaves, as you can see. So yeah, this is very, very helpful.
Then we get into chapter one. This is the star shape. We've got this beautiful painting of an orchid. I wanna do this for sure. I love orchids. I have a whole bunch downstairs. And what's nice, nice about this book is there's a lot of different styles. She's got loose style. She's got more of like a realistic, more detailed style. So you can really play around and get a feel for what technique, what type of art works for you, what resonates with you. So if you follow my channel, you guys know that I do a lot of detailed work. I usually bust out the black micron pen and like outline stuff and make it really sketchy. And I don't really go loose like that. So I love this book. Here's the picture I did. This is not good by any means, <laughs> but it allows you to open up and just get free and to allow the water to flow and let the color do what it wants um, without getting super detailed. So I love the different exercises in this book because it allows you to really try out different styles. So this is actually from a video that she posted, um, but it kind of ended up looking like these flowers. And of course, I can't think of the name, Clematis. It's like one of my favorite, <laughs> I couldn't think of the name. Um, so I just put this in here. But as you can see, this is a little bit more of like a detailed, realistic painting. So if you're into this style, this is a really good tutorial that'll walk you through how to do uh, this exact flower. Skipping ahead a little bit here. This is a watercolor of a sunflower that I did. This was really fun. And I wanna just quickly mention, here you can see she literally shows you how to apply the brush stroke. So like here's one, step two, come back down with the brush and kinda of get the belly down on the page and then you loosen it up just to get this really nice organic shape to the petals. And then she'll go in and tell you how to do the details, do additional washes, use smaller brushes to get some of the fine lines. But I really liked doing this, that was fun. And then you can see we've got another loose style here, a, doll, a Dahlia Scura, a Dahlia. Again, walks you through the kind of uh, brush strokes, how to hold your brush, when to apply pressure, when to not. This one, a ranunculus, is definitely more realistic. I have not done this yet. Um, I have to be in a certain mood for doing something this detailed, but I am up to the challenge and I will do it. Mark my words. But see, this is just a really good exercise in learning how to apply washes and then to go back in and create mid-tones, so like highlights, mid-tones, adding the details, and then even though you're doing these exercises, you have this beautiful finished piece that you could frame, you could put in your art journal, portfolio, whatever it is that you do. This is chapter three. This is all about bell-shaped flowers. And you can see right there, there's a little bell. I have fun doing this parrot tulip in loose style. Again, I'm not a loose painter by any means, so it was fun to switch things up a bit. Very good description on how to achieve this look, how to get that shape, how to go in and apply the details with the little uh, stamen and the stems, how to get the leaves to flow. So that was a fun exercise. This is chapter four, which is the bowl-shaped flowers. Again, you can see there's a little bowl there. And we've got some loose styles of a camellia, chrysanthemum, which I actually did. You can see there, just a really loose, flowy composition. That was a lot of fun, very easy to do. More of a realistic style. So you've got to do the sketch in advance and then go in with your mid-tones and then add the details. This peony just, oh, look at that. That color, the ruffles, I call them ruffles, roughly petals. This might be one I do in the future too. Gonna have to sit down and really uh, focus on getting all those shapes right. 
the shading. Yeah, that's gorgeous. This is trumpet shape, so you can do some lilies, it looks like. More loose style, there's your stargazer. Morning glories. So you can see there's so many different types of flowers that you can paint, study, get to know. I mean, look at this. That's insane. And you can learn how to do this. I mean, I know I sound like such a nerd, but that's so cool. It's not like some of the other watercolor books I have where you look at these beautiful illustrations. You're like, oh, maybe one day. This will actually teach you how to do it. So love that. Good on you, Jenna. Thank you. <laughs> there it is. Look at that. Love it. I thought really quickly I would show you something that I was working on over the summer. Actually, it's been the past two summers. This is a little sketchbook that I'll take outside with me and I will just watercolor what I have in my garden. You guys know that I'm a big gardener. I'm a seasonal artist, I always say. When it's winter and kind of icky out, I come inside and I focus on my art. And then when it's nice out, I'm always outside doing, um, working in my garden and not painting. So I've been trying to make an effort to combine both of these passions by painting in the garden. And this book was great, and that's why it's kind of a little warped, because on hot summer days, I would just sit out there with it and use this for inspiration to paint what I saw in my yard. In fact, this was one, um, she actually had a tutorial, I believe, in this book. So I ins that inspired me to do that. Here's the uh, clematis there, which I did grow. They did really well this year. Some violas, tried to do a loose style of lavender there. Did a little lavender study, some poppies. I always go over to my neighbor's house and I paint her garden too. Some leaves, hollyhock, hollyhock, not cock. I'm sorry about that. Daisies, hydrangeas. So this book is very inspiring because you learn these techniques and then you have the confidence to go out and do it on your own in real life. So I highly recommend this book. It's a great thing to add to your collection, especially if you're in to doing um, botanical drawings or if you want to get out in nature and paint what you see. It will definitely inspire you to create a notebook, to take pictures, to have fun in the garden and incorporate all of your passions together in one place. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And in the meantime, don't forget to art.